What is the merit of a true leader? Is it someone who knows every right thing to say? Perhaps it's the kind of person who commands authority. Maybe they're more knowledgeable and experienced than their peers. They could be the fastest, the smartest, the strongest. The idea of what a leader should and shouldn't be is very subjective. However, what is true of a great leader is that they are remembered, often immortalized throughout history. They are celebrated or reviled for their deeds. But what a leader often isn't, at least in those who celebrate our history, is human. Their humanity, because of their deeds, are stripped away from them. They're a hero, or maybe a villain, one that is remembered for generations to come. But the truth is, there was a real person behind those actions. There was a flesh and blood human with thoughts and feelings, whether we're comfortable with that fact or not. Enter Kamina from Gurren Lagann. We can all agree that Kamina makes his mark as a strong, reliable leader. His guidance is what helps humanity straight to victory. With a bountiful amount of crazy ideas, charisma, and skill, Kamina is a wild card that tipped the scales. But what about the man behind that legend? I think most of us are guilty of seeing Kamina as this legendary hero, rather than the true person he was. A man. A flawed, but inspirational man. So let's strip away that legend and look at Kamina for who he truly is. All his flaws, his ideology, and his own words. This is the true Kamina, the man behind the glasses. The truth is, it's easy for us to get wrapped up in Kamina's charisma and words, to envision him as the man with the plan who will lead everyone to victory, the paragon for what we should follow. He has so much bravado and charm, as well as a talent for working a crowd, that it's fairly easy for people to get swept up in that charismatic tidal wave. And that's exactly what Kamina wants. Because even though he is genuine in his devotion and skill, Kamina knows how to put on a brave face. He's the mighty Kamina, a man of indomitable spirit and masculinity. He will shout lines such as this as he parades into battle, exuding sheer charisma as far as the eye can see. And behind that mask is a man with his own doubts and fears. A man who, at times, is uncertain of what the future may hold, or if what he's doing is enough. But he wears that mask when he needs to. And he wears it well to the point where other people think he can constantly keep pushing through adversity. This has two purposes. One, to hype up everyone on his team. And two, to bolster himself. The hyping up everyone part is rather obvious. He understands that for people to perform well under periods of stress, like warfare, they need to be confident in themselves, their cause, and their leaders. Kamina is the hype man, the one who will give everyone else the boost they need. But he can also be playful about it, understanding his audience and what words, tones, and actions will be most effective. Not only does everyone excel because of this, but they believe in Kamina to help them get through it. But the second part is that he's secretly hyping himself up as well. Behind that mask is not a man completely lacking self-confidence or abilities, because the show demonstrates that's clearly not the case. Behind that mask is a man that is less dramatized than he puts on. The true face of Kamina is the one he shows Simon and Yoko. A man with confidence in his peers and himself, but one who also doesn't have every answer, and in some cases, is improvising. And he's completely aware of this. Even if we love to remember that power and ability that Kamina had as a leader, I don't think he was the best. And neither does he. The truth is, Kamina was a man who relied on others just as much as they relied on him as he was, in many ways, weak. He was a weak man chasing an ideal of what he thought true strength was, because that's what his father taught him. What is manliness in Kamina's eyes? What makes up the idea of a true man in the mind of the mighty Kamina? Honestly, his ideal of a man is rather self-sacrificing. His true vision of a man is someone who will put their life on the line for others, to lift those up when they need lifting. They know what to say, they inspire others, they're charismatic and strong, 
and they must keep pushing forward. In the beginning, he desperately clings to his dream of reaching the surface because this ideal of what a man is comes from his father, who stayed on the surface while Kamina, as just a little boy, hesitated. It's natural, of course, to feel fear of the unknown, especially at that age, but Kamina seems to hold this against himself and push himself to meet the ideal of a man to make up for it. And those are all very heroic ideals, but they are also ones that take into account others before yourself. Not to say that Kamina didn't live for himself at all. There was still a joy he had in his manly devotion. He fulfilled his wants and needs like food and love. But those are additions to the ideal. A man must keep a cool head. We have eyes in the front of our head to keep looking forward. Again, these are very idealistic, but they come at the expense of the person saying them. And that's because Kamina believes a man fights for a vision that is bigger than he is. It's why he wants to fight the beastmen, to free all of humanity. Because that's just what a man does. The ideal makes him strong, but it also makes him weak. Because he isn't able to live for himself as much as he should be. He doesn't take time to grieve for his father's death. He's always pushing himself to do greater. He doesn't take breaks. And that's where his relationship with Simon comes in. What's interesting about Kamina and Simon's brotherly bond is that they both complement each other's flaws. Simon's character in the beginning of Gurren Lagann is that he is a young man with so much potential, yet very little confidence in himself. He can do incredible things if he puts his mind to it, but his mind usually isn't in a place to get him there. He is the follower. He doesn't have any plans, but he can sure as hell get other plans done. Kamina is in many ways the opposite. He has a lot of self-confidence in his ability to speak, present, and lead. However, his abilities to get things done is lacking, and that's why he needs Simon. Simon is the one who helps his crazy plans work. They rely on each other in equal amounts. As much as Kamina supports and motivates Simon, Simon also motivates Kamina. This was revealed to us in episode 11 in a flashback with Yoko. He tells her that he won't be laughed at by that back. I find it quite fascinating and very realistic that the two work so well together because they're both important and motivating to each other, just in different ways. Kamina saw potential in Simon and wanted to help bring it out, and seeing Simon reach that potential pushed Kamina to do better as well. It's a never-ending spiral, just like a drill, feeding back into one of the core messages of the show. His weakness isn't something to be scoffed at or made fun of, it is something that makes him human. And he shows this weakness, this reliance on people due to his inability to perform at their level, to only Simon and Yoko. Because Simon is his best bro, and Yoko is the woman he loves. And it's because of this weakness that he can excel in other areas, that he is able to keep pushing. But he can only push for so long. And eventually, you're gonna break. We all know what happens at the end of episode 8. It is a moment that has burned itself in our brains. A moment where Kamina, a man content with living his life for others by being a true man, meets his death proudly. Because he has helped Simon on a path to being a great leader, an even greater leader than he was. And he pushed the others to also be better. This immortalized him in our minds, and the characters' minds, as a true hero. But like I said, Kamina wasn't the best leader. He wasn't an impossibly strong man. Behind those glasses, behind that rosy image that we have of him, is a flawed man who tried his best. A man who had his own failings. A man who was cocky and prone to dramatic outbursts in speech, even getting wrapped up in his own words. He was a man who acted on instinct, filling his belly and wishing for sexual pleasure when it was presented to him. And he was a man who was less willing to accept opposing ideology than a typical leader should be. When he and the others arrived at a dive village, he's immediately opposed to their leader, the village chief, Father Magi. Their ideology is almost completely opposite. Kamina wishes to save everyone, and Father Magi wants to save the people he can, and only those people. One hides for preservation, the other fights for it. And rather than finding compromise, Kamina was hostile. Of course, not to say that compromise is always possible between groups, especially in real life, but it should at least be a mindset between individuals who, at their core, are trying to do right. And Kamina doesn't do that. These are not the traits of a brilliant leader, but a flawed man who could play the part. But the thing is, Kamina is acutely aware of this. He knows that as a man, and as a human, he is going to have flaws that make him who he is. But that won't stop him from doing what he can do, 
and being the person he can be. He was able to put on a mask of a more dramatic version of himself, and that's the version we remember because that's what he wanted people to remember. But others knew the truth, that he was a man who relied on others just as much as they relied on him. He understood his flaws and knew someone was better suited for the job he had. We don't love Kamina because he was perfect, but because he was imperfect. His words of inspiration were rather nonsense that we found sense and meaning within. His crazy plans were genius because they took into account others' abilities to make his insanity work. He put on a persona of strength because he was, in many ways, weak. Behind those glasses, the glasses of a leader and a visionary, was a man. A man with flaws. A man who was, by no means, perfect. But that's exactly why he was, to us fans who love this character so much, completely perfect. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also make sure to click the bell so that way you're notified for future videos. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.